What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. With me this week is the reigning NWA World Women's Champion, and I believe 2020 bodybuilding champion as well, if I'm not mistaken. She is Camille. Camille, how are you doing this evening? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, it's going to be a great conversation. I'm looking forward to it, man. Uh, you, But you are well past the one year mark as i mentioned you are the nwa uh world women's champion you are well past the one year mark as uh as champion what 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 is this year long reign uh meant, meant to you since you first won the title back at uh the, the nwa went out shadows fall event if i'm not mistaken yeah so it's meant a lot i feel like i've really come into my own um this past year a little bit over a year and really showed everybody kind of what i'm made of because when i first won the title i'd only had a few matches um with the NWA at that point. So ever since then, I've really grown as a, as a performer, as a wrestler, as a talker, just everything. And so it's been um, an incredible year. Is it kind of crazy to know that like you, you're on your first reign, but like you're within the like top 10 longest reigning NWA women's champions of all time, along with the likes of jazz and Leilani Kai. And you, you know, the, the others, the other eight others that are or seven others that are on that list. Yeah, it's definitely something super special, especially all of the women that have held this title before. And, you know, like you said, I'm up there. I mean, Josh, she helps out backstage yep. uh, at, at the shows. And to, to be kind of in there with someone like her is such an honor. For sure, for sure. And, of course, we got the NWA uh, 74 event coming up. That's uh, what we're promoting, a two-night two event in, in late August. Um, you, you'll be defending your title on night one against Taya Valkyrie and then on night two. Uh, there's the possibility, the possibility, you know, that you that you might be defending, uh, <laughs> defending your side against the winner of the Burke Invitational. But like going back to night one and, and you and Taya, I know you guys had you guys were in, in the same match. I don't know. I don't I can't remember exactly if it was the one on one, but I know you guys were in the same match for the I think it was for the XVW women's title. I know that was that like their inaugural uh, crowning of mm -hmm. their first women's champion. I know you got to share the ring with Taya Valkyrie. Uh, it, did you get the chance to get like a, a feel for how Taya moves around the ring and, you know, sort of. Get, get that clash of styles going before you guys eventually meet up at, um, you, you know, meet up at NWA 74. So we actually had a one on one match oh, before okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Um, a few months before that. And, uh, I, you know, it was so cool to be able to step in the ring with Taya. She's someone that I've, you know, watched ever since I got into wrestling. So to be able to step in the ring with her was super cool. And uh, I felt like we had great chemistry in there. And I uh, can't wait to see what we can do at 74. And of course, like I said on night two, the, the the chance that you could be defending your title uh, against the the winner of the Burke Invitational. This is your this is crazy because this is actually your second year doing like these back to back title defenses. I know, <laughs> last, I know last year you did it at Empower, and then you did it at, again at NWA seventy three. Like, mm -hmm. is, is there any like special preparation you do when you have these? I know it's only your second one, your second time doing a back to back in terms of like you know under the NWA banner. But like I, I know that wear and tear can you know catch up catch up to one very easily. But is there anything that you do to like sort of prep yourself uh, to you know to go back to back and, and want to deliver special performances uh, consecutively like that? Yeah, I just try to stay in as good a shape as I can. We have a ring that my husband, um, he's a coach over here okay. in Hendersonville, Tennessee at a school called FXE Wrestling. So luckily I have a ring available where I can kind of keep up my cardio and stuff like that. And, you know, it is, it's interesting because when you have to do a pay-per-view match, God willing, I'm doing both, you know, God willing, yeah. I win that first night and, <laughs> and I'm there the second night. Um, it, you're having to... You can't have the same match twice if that makes any mm. sense. So, so you're having to find a way to kind of, uh, you're not having that long in between the pay per views where people might forget what you did last time. So it's okay if you do a couple similar things. You know, it's right. like literally the very next night. So you're having to really <laughs> you, turn on your creativity a lot. So that's something that's interesting. Uh, I'm about to say in, in front of the same, essentially the same audience. Too, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So and, and and you know you you've been a part of the fabric of this. Uh, Billy Corgan's version of the NWA, um, you know, since I, I believe 2018 or so, when you first came in at the uh, work, work, working mm -hmm. with Nick Aldis, like what, what what has it been like to sort of, you know, somebody that's on the inside to see like the growth of the organization and sees like sort of the twists and turns that have been able to come with it. Of course, you guys have uh, implemented the NWA USA, and of course, you know, it, it's it, th things were like really hot right out the gate with the NWA uh, when. when um, you know, when the power was first established and then of course the pandemic sort of the real things and, you know, you guys had to hit like a reset. Like what, what has it been like to sort of go through all of that and and now to be on the, 
I, I would say like the back end of, of the pandemic in terms of like being far, uh, being being removed from it in the sense that things are getting back into the swing of things. But well, what has it been like for you for somebody that's been there like from from 2018 to where you guys are now and see the ups and downs and see see you guys come out of it uh, still solid? Yeah, so like you said, it's definitely been a bit of a roller coaster when we first started NWA Power on YouTube. I mean, the it feedback was, was in it was incredible. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, we were like doing super well. And then boom, the pandemic hits <laughs> and we go from a hundred to zero instead yeah. of zero to a hundred and uh, literally weren't doing anything. And so that was a big hit and kind of disheartening. And, and at one point we didn't know if we were going to come back or not. You mm. know, I didn't know if I would have a job or not. And so that was a bit scary, but um, thank God we, you know, we've come back and now we're getting our feet back under us. I think people are really appreciating that we're, that we're still fighting here and, and creating content for people that love like old school wrestling. And so, you know, that's something that I'm really proud of that we just continue to keep fighting. And, and of course, uh, going back to the NWA 74, like I know last year, uh, the Empower event, the all-women's event, what, what was a part of that weekend. Very successful, and you guys, yes. got, a, guys got a lot of great feedback um, from, from from that show. Like, th this year's anniversary does not have the Empower event along with it. Like, is that something that you would have liked to see become a tradition? Expect Like, especially considering, like, the like the great deal of support that you guys had going into it and, you know, coming out of it, and especially, like, with all the media members that came through to, uh, you know, come talk about the event and just, and just a variety of different moments that came along with being part of that show. Yeah, so I do think that it would be something nice to do like a once a year type of thing, an empowerment, just because it was such a great turnout last year. I mean, yeah. that night, you know, like you said, I performed both nights and I actually enjoyed the crowd on the first night more. Yeah. I thought they were even more into it. Um, so it is something that I would like to see. But I do. But Mickey James was it just I mean, it was basically her event. She was a huge part of it. And I know that now that she's back in kind of the swing of things and she mm -hmm. has a lot going on. So, I mean, that plays a part into, you know, not happening this year. Um, and because it, it was her baby, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's something that I definitely would love to see in the future for sure. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would be very, very interested to see a, a second Empower event. Like, and, and and then it was cool because like I saw wrestlers, um, you know, from other promotions and other companies, you know, sending out their support and and, and using mm -hmm. the hashtag. And stuff. I, I thought that was real cool, man, to see like just a collective group of people come together to support this group pro, like, not group project, but like this overall project. Uh, that, that yeah. and I, I think everything went well, and especially like the moments that came out of it. Like I mentioned, the uh, the awesome Kong uh, retirement and that moment that she had with Gil Kim and like. Like I, you know, it's it's kind of out now that nobody like knew that she was going to go out there and, and and do that, and I thought that was just a real special moment to add to an overall special night. Yeah, it was super special. Like you said, it was a total surprise. None of us knew she was going to be there except for <laughs> Mickey and a couple other people. So, yeah, it was really incredible. And, and you know, while, while mentioning the word uh, anniversary, I know I said it a couple of times while referring to NWA seventy four, but it has actually been one year, Camille, since you appeared on uh, AEW Dynamite to confront Layla Hirsch. How, how, yeah. how, do, how, how do you look back on that whole build, uh, the match, and, and Layla in general? And, ju and just to mention, of course, with Layla, like I know, you know, with speedy recovery to her. I know she's currently sidelined right now with a torn ACL. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when I found out that's my match was going to be again, I was very excited simply for the fact that before that I had the girls that I had wrestled like Thunder Rosa and Serena Deeb, uh, they were kind of known in the industry as working a while and, and mm -hmm. everything like that. So my matches with them when they went well, it was kind of like, well, they did it type of yeah. thing you know everyone's yeah. like well they led the match and so i was super excited to have layla because layla is also kind of newer mm -hmm. in, in the business and i wanted to be like hey you know what we're gonna show people that us new girls we can like we can work together and we can make something magical and that's exactly what we did so that was super cool for me and layla's you know she's so intense and you know she's small but mighty and i also just love that story you know the 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 big versus small, yeah. the Goliath, or, you know, I, I love that. So I think it was a super cool story that we were able to tell. And then, like you said, being able to just show up on AEW for a second and, and get a little bit more eyes on the NWA through that way was really cool. And, and you know what? That, I remember when you first, uh, yeah, when you, when you showed up on, on, on AEW Dynamite and like that visual of you and Layla Hirsch, <laughs> like you, like yeah. you towering over, I, it, it was just like a real cool visual because you want to know the, the, the cool thing about the dynamic that I like between uh, you guys is that, 
Like it, it wasn't presented as if Layla Hirsch was like this, n- not underdog in a sense, but they presented Layla as like what, what her nickname is, like legit, like very, very tough yeah. in a sense. And it, it it wasn't like she was like, even though she is a smaller competitor in the, in the, uh, in the matchup, it wasn't like, Oh, the Camille is going to like steamroller type thing. It was like, right. like Layla, Layla can, Layla can go too. And I, I, I just really liked the the dynamic that you guys had and the way that it was presented, you know, up until the match. And then I think you guys performed really well as well. So I, I, I think that was like a real cool thing. And I, I honestly wouldn't mind whenever Layla gets healthy. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing you guys running that back. Oh, I think we would definitely love to have seen her a couple at a couple like conventions since then. And we always talk okay. about, you know, being able to do something else again, because we had really good chemistry in there as well. So it, I would love that. And, and I, mean, I, I got a crazy stat for you. And I hope, I hope I did my numbers right, but I definitely think I did. So I believe you've had, since you won the title, I believe you've had 20 title defenses since winning the belt last year. Uh, NWA 74, it could be 22 successful title defenses. How insane is that to know that you've had 20 title defenses and possibly could be 22 by the end of NWA 74? That's interesting to me because I'm not I'm not a big like stat person when it comes to wrestling. So even like the number of days yeah. that I've been champion, I usually don't know unless someone tells me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that yeah, that's super interesting and really cool. Uh, something that I'm that I'm very proud of, and I I'm happy that you noticed that because I will say like I talked to an, another um, interviewer the other day, and it's something that for some reason just doesn't get talked about a lot. I don't know if it's because our company is still growing and we're mm-hmm. trying to get eyes on it still, but it's just something that I do think gets kind of looked over. And it's like right now I'm the longest reigning champion on the scene right now. Um, yeah. So so it's um, something that I'm really proud of and I just wish would, you know, catch on a little bit more and people would get more of a hold of. I would say, Camille, when, when you look back at, you know, your, your arrival to the NWA, um, I, I, I know it's like sort of like a loaded question, but at the same time, like, I, I'm just curious as to how, like, you, you felt coming in, uh, being in that managerial role and then, mm-hmm. and then, you know, doing the whole thing, but you not talking and then, you know, the whole build to you actually saying like your first words and stuff like that on, on in the NBA program, which I thought was real cool. Um, just, just talk to me about how you felt like about, about your presentation coming in and sort of the growth of your on screen character, uh, to, to, to the point where you are now, where you are essentially the face of the NWA women's division. So I think it was a great way to kind of dip my toe back into wrestling because when I came back, there was a period of time where I was I thought I was pretty much done wrestling Mm. Um, and but I started to miss it a little bit. And so that opportunity came up and the fact that I wasn't going to be an in-ring performer was actually a good way to come back into the business. Mm. And so we didn't know if I would ever end up wrestling for NWA or not, like what, what, what direction it would take. And it just organically kind of went that way and one day billy was like hey we want to invest in you as an in-ring performer so that's you know that's what happened and um it's it's a blessing and a curse in a way because i don't think that i would have got back into it if i was initially just thrown into the fire and had to you know go in the ring right away right like i said it was a great way to dip my toe back in but also like i mentioned i'm not ever in the talks even though i'm the longest reigning champion right now there is Mm -hmm. about like you know with the diana peraza thunder rosa um taya Mm -hmm. um even though i've literally beat all those people and so it's like is it that is that because i came onto the scene as just a manager i don't know so you know that's also an interesting kind of thing to think about and it had and you know it people need to realize okay i am a wrestler now and a very legit one at that (laughs) It, it is an interesting conversation in terms of like, you know, wh- why isn't, you know, your reign and, and what you've done over the past year, four year or year plus now uh, isn't like it, it within that conversation. Like, like maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe it's because of the fact that more people like because because the NWA, it had a lot of steam like yeah. uh, like pre pandemic. And then like I felt like with most wrestling, it, so it sort of took a while for people to like jump back in it and like get fully, fully immersed. You know, yeah. as, as the pandemic started to go on and on, and then like I, I think now we're at the point where like things are like really back in the swing of things. So maybe it's the maybe just a matter of people finding their way back to the NWA program and stuff like that. But 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 I I do like that you guys um I, I do like that you guys air on you air the power show I think two times a week this the uh, two times a week now you get it on fight and then it, I think the free it comes out for free on uh the yes. YouTube the later on that Fridays. week. Yeah, so, so mm-hmm. I I think that's a cool dynamic uh 
that you that you guys have. But but like so sort of talk to me about like the sort of the festivities of the, of the NWA 74 week. And I know there's like meet and greets and stuff happening like that. I know media members are going to be out there. It's a very exciting time for the NWA to have this, you know, this back to back two night event. Yeah. And another important thing about it is the wrestling history in St. Louis yep. is so intensive and, and exciting that the people there just that that live in St. Louis, they're so excited to have wrestling back, especially at the chase somewhere as historic as the chase. And so the fans are really great, you know, there and super involved. And I think they give us, you know, a lot of their heart and soul when they come and they're they're. They really come to, to enjoy, you know, enjoy wrestling and have a good time. And that's something that's the most special for me because I want people that enjoy wrestling and don't want to just sit there and, and pick it apart as so many wrestling fans do. The St. Louis fans, they really want to just come and have a good time. And so that's something that's super special. And like you said, there's meet and greets and all of that. And so it's your time to kind of meet the wrestlers face to face and have a few words with them. So that's super cool. Like, so, so when you, uh, I, I have read that you played uh football in, 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 in I think it was the Legends Football League for the Atlanta yeah. State. Was that, was that pre pro wrestling? So I actually I started training for wrestling in two thousand and sixteen. Okay. Um, in in Florida, and then when I was trying to decide what my like wrestling gimmick on the Indies would be. I wanted to it to be like a football gimmick. Mm. And then I was like, well, I, I want it to be legit if I'm going to do that. So I went and I tried out for the team and I knew I'd make it because I've always been athletic. Mm. And um, so I played for a season literally just to help my wrestling career. <laughs> and, it, and it worked out. I about to say, so, so was being in a, 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 a sport such as that, a sport such as football, like did that only like increase your, your, your want to, you know, make that full transition over to, to, to pro wrestling? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a commitment. I drove every weekend to practice six and a half hours there, six and a half Whoa. hours back. Just yeah, just for practice on the weekends. So it was definitely, a, definitely a commitment. But I mean, I wanted to do everything to make my character legit. And the football was something you know new and exciting for me as well. I, I like trying new things. Mm. So um, yeah, it just it gave me a little time off of having to travel for like wrestling per se, and then just focus on the football, and then. So when football was over, I was ready to dive fully into my indie wrestling career. Right, right. And and, and you you've uh, like you mentioned, you you're still very. I I was I would still say very early in, in your wrestling career. It's still a very early years of your in your career. Like yes, I, I, I'm I'm sure you're always looking to like implement new things into what you do in the ring and your presentation overall. Like what what are some things strictly from an in ring standpoint? Um, not, not strictly from strictly, not strictly from an in ring standpoint, but in, in ring and your overall presentation that you know some things that are maybe like pop up in your mind, like at random points during the day that you would like to improve on and work on, and like so, sort of ideas that maybe come to mind that you would be like, you know what, that 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 wouldn't be bad if I if I would do this or switch this up or or maybe go this route. I mean, of course, when it comes to in ring stuff, there's just a few things that I want to work on my game, but I don't want to expose myself, so I'm oh, not right, going right. to say, <laughs> I'm not going to say what they are. <laughs> But uh, just I, I'm actually something like a like fun fact is mm. I feel like I'm actually a, a very good promo when I it, get the opportunity to do so. And so like the fact that I didn't talk for a while is interesting. So just more opportunities to cut even more promos, especially um, live promos. I love live promos. Mm. So um, just the opportunity to do that even more and show even more of myself. Because I think when I first started talking, people were like, so upset about my accent <laughs> they, they thought i was going to be like british or russian and i was southern <laughs> and they were so upset about it and uh but i think that now people are kind of getting used to my deep voice and my southern accent and so it's like the more that people are exposed to that the more they're like oh, okay i'm down with this you know what i mean <laughs> i say that's, fun. that's funny people thought that she was gonna be british that's funny right there but, yeah <laughs> uh, but, but I, I had read this story one time uh it, it was about i think it was, i think it was I, th I think I think you had said it happened in 2016. Uh, you had like moved to Florida and like you just like decided that you was going to take a shot and you showed up at the WPC and you was like, hey, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. what, 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 what can we do? And it led to you actually receiving a trial. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, just, sort of, just sort of walk me through that. And did, did you think that by you, uh, you know, showing up there that it would lead to, you know, you, you getting you getting an opportunity or was it just the mindset of like you know what i'm just about to throw something at the wall and if it works it works and if it doesn't it doesn't yeah so i luckily 
I had no idea about like wrestling etiquette, wrestling, like any of the, <laughs> you know, like any of the unspoken rules. Cause I, I don't have anyone in my family that is in this business. Like it's a completely new venture for me. So I knew nothing about it. So when I moved down to Florida for it to train at team 3d, I didn't r- realize that I wouldn't have time to like have a normal job. Cause I'd always had like a very regular job up to that point. So uh, one day, like when I first moved there, I got my resumes together and I was all dressed up, you know, looking nice for interviews and stuff. Cause I'm old school. Like I, I like to go in person and like drop off my resume and meet the whoever's in charge. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and while I was doing that, I was like, well, you know what? I know the performance center is down here somewhere. And at that point you could not find the address of the performance <laughs> center. So I, as a female, you know, I'm a super sleuth. So I somehow like figured it out and figured out where it was. And I was like, I can just go there, drop off my resume. And I thought that like, I would be able to maybe like work in marketing there and then train as a wrestler at the same time. Like I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And so um, I've just buzzed on the buzzer and I was like, hi, I'm interested in, um, in working here and also becoming a wrestler. And they were like, uh, one second. <laughs> and then they buzzed me in. And I just talked to the, the manager of the building and yeah, it led to me getting a tryout, but they all, but they, they did explain to me, they were like, well, you can't work as a, you know, have a regular job and be a wrestler. They were like, that's not how it works. So <laughs> I, said, I didn't know any better. I, I, th- I think that's cool that you took that chance. And, and look, think about it. If you would have never took that chance, you know, you would have never got the trial. And I, I, I think it's cool. I think it's cool when people like just take a, like just bet on themselves and just, just to see yeah. what's out there. Cause like, if you like, I, I think one of the big things just with anybody, not even just in wrestling, just in life in general, like I, I think uh, our fear of, like not succeeding is like one of the things that holds us back from like a lot of different opportunities. And like the fact that you just went out there and just like, you know what, let's, let's see what happens. And, and, you know, some came out of it. So you, you got some useful out of that whole situation. I think that's real cool. Definitely. And like, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm so glad that I was naive to the <laughs> unspoken wrestling rules. Because, and let me tell you, if I would have gone to, cause I hadn't gone to the wrestling school yet. Cause I literally had just moved there mm-hmm. and um, the wrestling school started the next week. If I would have gone to the wrestling school and like heard, you know, all these unspoken rules and stuff that week, I would have never done that, mm. you know. And so, like, that's why I'm, I'm actually very happy that I didn't know any of these un- little unspoken rules and stuff. So I just went for it. And, and, and Camille, I, I mentioned this earlier, uh, you, you know, your four year anniversary, I believe, coming up with the NWA this October. Um, yeah. As, as you approach that anniversary, like what 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 is the like the long term uh, look like for you in, in, in the organization? Like, could you see yourself like helping bring more talent to the women's division of source and and you know like could, could you see yourself maybe you know like uh, not, not not anything like super super specific because i know that's like it's like hard to pinpoint in terms of like what could come because you know anything could change within the next couple of months or the next couple of weeks but um like what, what, do, you, what do you think your long term look like with the nwa and, and and how do you see your um how, how do you see yourself continue to grow you know within the fabric of the organization as as things continue to move forward for you guys so I love working for the NWA. I love my bosses. I love my coworkers. Uh, it's just a really great atmosphere, especially when it comes to professional wrestling. The mm. reason I quit a long time ago, even on the Indies, is because it can be a very toxic uh, place mm. and some pretty bad people involved. And um, that's something that I just truly like to stand behind the NWA is that the locker room is great. The office is great. And at the end of the day, you know, I hope to stay with the NWA and right now it's my career and I make a a good living doing it. And, you know, as long as I can stay happy, healthy and make a living doing it, I'm in it for the long haul. And um, when I'm done in ring, I would still love to be involved in the company, like you said, like helping the women's division in any way I can. Uh, Something I take pride on is like the way I put my matches together. And uh, Mm -hmm. I think that's something that I can help a lot of help a lot of girls with. Um, so that's something I would definitely be interested in doing in the future as well. Yes, yeah, so I had I saw that uh, uh, a Lunger Blaze alongside uh, Allison K. Uh, they, they they were like on the or on, I think they were one, two two of the people that made the announcement uh, for for the NWA World Women's Television Championship that, that mm-hmm. that's gonna be happening real soon. Like, tell me your thoughts about that and how cool that is that the NWA along with the uh, World Women's Tag Team Title and the the World Women's Championship that you're holding are now into implementing an, another title. Uh, within that for for the singles division and now i think that are only uh like entice more competitors on the independent scene and maybe from other promotions and, and companies to, to to might want to come challenge for that title yeah so i think it's great that you know more women will get even more opportunities through that and a little more eyes on them and something 
that they can hold that, you know, feels important to them. And like you said earlier, we have also NWA USA. So I yep. think that's a great, a great like title for that show. So, you know, there can be a title that's been on all that show. So I think it works out um, really well. I do, I do, you mentioned the, um, the NWA women's tag team titles. I do wish that we could grow that division a little bit more because to me, if you're going to have the titles, you need to kind of have people in that division, yeah. if you will. Um, so that's that's something within like the next year I would like to to see grow a little bit more. You you know it's funny you say that because I, I'm I, like when I, when I look at uh, I, I think the only um like people filtering in and out of or, or, or doing both like the, the same yeah the tag it's stuff very like, random it's yeah, very random yeah and it'll it'll be like pairing people like pairing random people together and I think it's the yes. thing of like establishing like legit tag teams and, and right and and, and, and and making them like a focal point for that division and and, and not to say that they can't do singles like of course you still do singles but of course but you want to have teams that are teams if, if that yeah. makes sense no i totally agree and that's something that you know like i said i really hope that we can kind of grow that a little bit more because i i don't i don't want it to be something where people are just randomly thrown together and then no one can ever like get behind them because right. no one knows them as a team you know right 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 and, and I, I think we've seen that like a lot just in pro wrestling like the the, the makeshift tag team and yeah, like, and, like you'll like, and 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 I th- the thing I do like about uh you know the NWA, I know you guys have like uh Alistair K and Marty Bill, the Hacks, like they've been a tag team for a while. Like they, yeah, they, they're they, a true they, yeah true, true tag, tag team. team. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're a true tag team. So I I, yeah. I think that's real cool right there. Um, and, and you know you you mentioned you mentioned Jazz uh helping out backstage. Um, I, I think Jazz is her you know her resume speaks for itself. De- definitely a true legend mm-hmm. in, in pro wrestling. And I also read that Alundra Blaze is uh helping out as well as she'll uh, do do stuff here and there so, so talk about what it's like having you know those two backstage at, at, at times and you know to be able to bounce ideas off of them and you know you know j- j- just to have them as a sounding board as well and i also uh I, I think i heard that dr tom pritchard was backstage at the always ready show and like people was like running to him and like you know trying to <laughs> you, know, you know like like go like trying to get uh so many ideas uh for, from him but just talking yeah. about like to have people like that um backstage that you'll be able to filter filter ideas through and stuff like that that is true because Dr. Tom, I went up to him and I was like, I want you to age one of my matches one day, you know? I, yeah, like, because he's, he's just so brilliant, you know? So, uh, super cool that we are having him involved. I, I'm not sure if it was a one time thing, if it's right. going to be all the time now, but like, very, very grateful to, to have him backstage. But as far as, um, um, I, I almost said Molina, <laughs> but, uh, Medusa mm. is, um, it, she works a lot with like the guys, the guys, um, matches. Okay. So she hasn't been my agent or anything, but just as a person, she's obviously everyone knows she's just super cool and down to earth. Yeah. And then jazz, she's like my mama there. Like I <laughs> talked to her about everything and, um, and I just, jazz is so cool. Like she, especially for everything that she's done in this business and she already doesn't get enough credit for it. Like she's yeah. so laid back and cool. And, um, that's just somebody that, you know everybody can learn from and and she she doesn't talk down to you she doesn't she's you know she's just such a cool person yeah one one, one, th- one thing i've noticed about jazz just from uh hearing interviews that she's done she is very very humble a little yes. too, a, little, a little too humble at times like mm-hmm. c- 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 considering like everything that she's done and like i i, I I'm, I'm i'm very glad that she was able to get that last like you know hoorah S run, you know, and, and you know, sort of make the rounds a little bit. Like it, it, it was cool, man. But I, I definitely think that Jazz, like when people look back at her overall career and like what she's contributed to the business since the nineties, that's a that's, that's a uh, like an all star Hall of Fame career right there, man. It's it's very cool to like see because I, you, I've, I've you know heard from Allison and and, and Marty Bill and a few others within the NWA, like you know, just having Jazz back there, and you know, just, her just being like a a good person to have overall in your in your backstage environment. So yeah, it's, it's very cool to hear that from you as well. So yeah, shout out to Jazz. Uh, but yeah. but, 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 la- but lastly, here before we wrap up, Camille, I had saw that you recently uh, spoke candidly about mental health awareness. You know, being open, you know, about being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Like, what, what was it tasking to open up about that? And did you get like a not necessarily a sense of relief, but like maybe like just a, a, a overall feeling of positivity, positivity coming from the, you know, the positive comments that you that you receive, you know, c- coming out to going public with that. Yeah. So, I mean, I actually went public about it. Like I used to do uh, back in the co- like COVID the pandemic times, okay. I was doing a lot of YouTube videos 
And I came out about it then. Okay. And so okay. that, that was scary then. Um, uh, but now I'm very open about it. I, I just, to me, I don't post about it like a ton because I also don't want to be a person like a woe is me yeah. and look at me, look, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. but I do think it's important to occasionally bring up and especially if I'm maybe not posting a lot or not talking a lot about this or whatever, um, Sometimes I feel like I do owe people an explanation, even though I technically I don't, but you know what I mean? Like people, you know, people kind of, especially your fans and, and like the nice fans, the people that are truly there for you and, and, and stuff like that. They like want you, you know, have your best interest at heart. Um, kind of like let them know what's, what's been going on and what's happening and like, and little things like my medication, it literally made me gain weight. And as people are seeing that, it's like, I feel like I need to kind of explain, hey, I'm dealing with this, this, this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something like a lot of people, they might not know about. And um, and like I said, in one in like one of my videos, whether you're diagnosed with something or not, like everyone in the world deals with with something and deals yeah. with shit and goes through goes through hard times. And so and don't get me wrong, I'm. I'm not a very patient person. I get impatient with people too, mm -hmm. but I have to always try to remember like, just be as kind as you can to people because like everyone deals with shit and you never know what they're dealing with that day, what happened that week. And uh, it's, it's kind of an important message for me. For sure. For sure. Like that definitely shout out to you for opening up, further opening up about that. And it, it was very mm -hmm. cool to see uh, when, when I saw that video pop up on my timeline, I thought that was real cool to, uh, Real, real cool to see you be very candid right there, uh, you know, from someone in your position. So, you know, a lot of people probably, you know, took, took inspiration for that. And, you know, they, you know, pro some, some people probably need to hear stuff like that and just to let them know that they're not like, you know, the only ones going through it uh, outside, outside of the people within their respective bubbles, if that if, if that makes sense. So, yeah, for, for sure. Shout out to you, Camille. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, that, that's going to wrap it up, everybody, for myself and the NWA World Women's Champion, Camille. And we are out. Peace. Bye.